In the year 2800, two astronauts from Earth, Adam and Jake, are seen in their spaceship. They are flying to a planet named Antares, which is rumored to have a large settlement of humans. It turns out that a deadly virus has left women back on Earth completely barren, so the two astronauts are the only hope left for humanity. Their mission is to venture to Antares, find some women, and convince them to travel to Earth for the boys. Shortly after, when the spaceship nears Antares, it suddenly becomes unstable due to the strange gravitational pull there. Adam and Jake try their best to regain control of the ship, and to some extent, they do, but it still ends up crashing on the surface. Both the astronauts sustain minor injuries, but Jake comes off the worst of it. Adam quickly escorts him out before the smoke inside suffocates them. Then, we are shown an aerial shot of the planet, Antares. It is a barren wasteland that has large formations of rocks everywhere, with no signs of vegetation. Meanwhile, Adam operates on Jake's wounds and injects him with a futuristic syringe that heals him automatically. As the two are conversing, suddenly, a dog's barking is heard. Up until now, they had believed that life on the planet was just a rumor, but with the bark, they get renewed motivation, and Adam starts following the sound. After a bit of wandering around, he comes across a primitive-looking boy, clutching his dog with a worried look. Adam tries to get near him, but the scared boy says, the snakeheads are near, and runs away. Unfortunately, just after a few minutes, it. He is captured by the snakeheads, who appear to actually be women clad in primitive military costumes. They quickly knock the little boy out and take him into custody, while his dog runs away. On the other hand, Adam is inspecting the strange place when a massive earthquake rocks him. Scared, he immediately calls Jake via his high-tech watch and asks him to take a geoscan of the area. Following this, Adam ventures further deep into the land until he comes across a large temple. He covertly sneaks inside and is taken aback to witness a large number of women there. It turns out that on this planet, women rule everything, while men are forced to become slaves, and a few of them are used to procreate. Inside the temple, the women appear to be chanting some prayers for their serpent lord. Here, we get to know that the religious women belong to a cult, which is led by the fearless Taxan. Right then, the serpent lord also appears from the ground, which is a gigantic cobra. We are then introduced to the queen of planet Antares, Sumuru, who seems to be less than impressed by the cult's work. Meanwhile, while the little boy from earlier is brought to the room. As Adam watches with shock and horror, Taxan reveals that the boy is about to be sacrificed to the Serpent Lord. Hearing this, the boy's sister Dove, who happens to be one of the Queen's soldiers, starts fighting with Taxan's cult members. Here it is revealed that the women inside the temple are divided into two factions, one that works for Taxan and the other that follows the Queen. As everyone watches on, Dove continues fighting alone, and suddenly, the Serpent Lord swoops down and gobbles up one of the cult members. An enraged Taxan orders her women to capture Dove, but the Queen stops them, claiming it was just self-defense. The two leaders almost get into an argument of their own, but just then, Adam, who has been hiding in a corner, gets a call from his friend, which alerts everyone in the room. Taxan immediately orders her soldiers to go after him, but Adam uses one of his high-end guns to create a diversion and flee. During the chaos, the little boy, Will, also manages to escape from the temple. After a while, Adam and the little boy catch up and head to the spaceship to escape this planet. However, before Adam can enter, he is shot in the leg by one of Taxan's women. Still, with the help of Jake and the boy, he manages to get inside the spaceship, but the arrow appears to be poisoned, causing him to slowly lose consciousness. Outside, the queen arrives with her own army and tells Taxan's cult gang to go away. At first, they refuse to comply, claiming that it is perfectly legal for women to kill men, but when Sumeru asserts that she is the queen and that she has jurisdiction over everything, they reluctantly leave. Following Following this, the Queen enters the spaceship and confronts the aliens. She then takes out an anti-venom and injects it in Adam, hence saving his life. In the next scene, Adam and Jake are brought to the Queen's residence, where they manage to meet up privately. Jake reveals that according to the geoscans he conducted earlier, he found out that the planet is dying, and that is why the earthquakes are so frequent. At max, the planet has two months before it ultimately self-destructs. Later, Adam is taken to the Queen's chamber for interrogation. He introduces himself and mentions that he is from planet Earth. He also claims that the people on Antares are descendants from Earth, as some people were sent on a terraforming mission a thousand years back. They regularly reported their findings for the first 100 years, but after that, all communication ceased. The Earth also went through a deadly war, and that is why they didn't try to find out much about their people on Antares. Hearing all of this, the Queen is taken aback, but she nonetheless supports the claims, as their legend mentions of a planet called Earth. As the two continue talking, the topic of the snake cult comes up. Queen Sumeru reveals that due to the continuous earthquakes, the people reverted to religion, and that is when Taxan rose to power. She comes from an extremely noble family.
family and believed that she was destined to become the queen. However, the people didn't elect her. This is why she has been gathering cult followers so that one day, she can take the throne for herself. As for the large cobra, it just appeared out of nowhere. Shocked by the revelations, Adam tries to explain that the planet is dying and that everyone should immediately evacuate, but the queen doesn't want to listen to a man. Instead, she starts talking about why men are dominated on Antares. She reveals that long, long ago, the men ignited a large flash of light, which killed a lot of people. From that day onwards, the women have taken control over the land, and it is perfectly legal to kill men if they are found to be disobedient. Shortly after, the queen leads Adam to a primitive mine, where all the men are working as laborers. According to the queen, men are either used as slaves, for sacrifices, or occasionally used to procreate. The sight disgusts Adam, but when he tries to speak out his thoughts, he is beaten up and taken away. Unfortunately, while the guards are escorting him back to the queen's residence, they are attacked by Taxan's gang. The notorious cult members slay all of the queen's guards and apprehend Adam. Sadly, among the casualties is also Dove. As she breathes her last, her brother Will arrives to help her, but it is too late. Meanwhile, Adam is brought to Taxan's chambers, where the Serpent Queen asks him to join their cause. She even kisses him passionately to seduce him into their team. However, Adam, being the wise guy that he is, refuses straight away. I'm an astronaut, lady, not a simp. This causes an altercation between the two, but before Adam can get hurt, the Queen, Jake, and Will, disguised as guards, come to his rescue. Taxan tries to fight back, but the Queen knocks her out with a single punch before leaving. On their way out through the tunnels, the astronauts discuss the state of the planet, and Jake reveals that they have less time than he had guessed earlier. According to his recent calculations, Antares may blow up in a matter of days. The queen overhears their conversation and brings out her locket, which has a special kind of element in it. It turns out that the element is extracted from a place called the Burn Zone, which is the same spot that the spaceship from Earth landed 1,000 years ago. Hearing this, the astronauts get excited, because if they can somehow reach the place and restart the ship, they can head back to Earth. The queen also agrees to help them, and together, they start marching towards the burn zone. Along the way, they evade several of Taxan's goons, and also manage to free some men who were locked up as slaves. Once they finally reach outside, Queen Sumeru tells the astronauts that they still have to travel several kilometers, as the burn zone is located behind a large hill. Despite the challenges, and the serpent group hot on their tails, Jake and Adam decide to continue their journey. Shortly after, Adam tries convincing the queen to come along with them, mentioning that it's much safer up there on Earth. However, she politely declines, asserting that she doesn't rule the people, but serves them, which I guess means that she should let them all die. Just then, a massive earthquake hits, which causes the group to tumble down. With this, Jake deduces that the planet's impending doom is nearing. After a while, the group comes across the skeletal remains of a man, and when Jake examines it, he learns that the man died some 900 years ago, the same year that humans came to Antares. On further inspection, he also finds out that there was a solar blast last in the area, and that is why most of the men perished. Hearing this, the queen realizes that it was the same flash of light that their ancestors witnessed centuries ago. Since the light was caused by natural causes, the men were innocent after all. Hence, all these years, their religion, which stated that men are dangerous and evil, was built upon a lie. The revelation devastates the queen, but the boys tell her to keep moving, as they don't have much time left. In the next scene, the group finally arrives outside the burn zone, which appears to be a huge space dome. Jake and little Will try to restart the engine from the control room, while Adam and the Queen head to another room to engineer the controls from there. After a lot of struggle, the astronauts manage to reignite the engine, but unfortunately, Taxan and her goons also show up. A deadly battle ensues between the two parties, but Adam, with the high-end gadgets, manages to blow up most of the evil women. Now, only Taxan is remaining, but she challenges the Queen to a fair one-on-one -on -one combat, to which the latter agrees. At first, the the two are equally matched, but soon, using her impressive combat techniques, the queen gains the upper hand. Realizing that she is about to lose, the evil Taxan takes out her knife and lunges forward to attack, but once again, the queen easily counters. After beating up the Serpent Queen for a while, the queen throws her against a generator, electrocuting her to a pulp. Still, the resilient Taxan is unwilling to give up, and she charges at the queen with her knife, but this time, Adam fires at her and finishes her once and for all. At the end of the day, men and guns have their way. Hell yeah, amen, brother. Back in the control room, Jake has managed to start the spaceship, and it is now ready for takeoff. After learning that men are not responsible for any of the atrocities on Antares, and that the planet is dying, the Queen also decides to join Jake, Adam, and 
goodwill in their journey to the Earth. Soon, the spaceship takes off and flies into the air. All the people of Antares, the men, the Queen's soldiers, and even Taxan's cult members gaze at the large spaceship in awe. Seeing them without their leader, Adam feels bad and suggests that they bring everyone inside the ship, as it has enough space for 500 people. Jake tries to assert that the violent earthquakes can destroy the ship, but Adam and the Queen are willing to take their chances. Left with no choice, Jake obliges to the orders and starts descending the spaceship. Soon, they arrive on the surface, and the people are awestruck to witness the large structure, which they previously called the Burn Zone. The Queen Sumeru steps out and orders everyone to get inside, mentioning that their planet is about to die, so that they are venturing into a far away planet. The planet will have several other people, where there is no disparity in gender, race, or religion. Oh, I guess they're not talking about Earth after all. Hearing this, the people become excited, and they immediately enter the ship. However, before Jake and Adam can pilot the spaceship away from the planet, a massive earthquake rocks everyone. When they look outside, they notice the giant serpent attacking one of the ship's propellers. With time running out, Adam orders Jake to apply full throttle on the propeller. And fortunately, as soon as he does so, the serpent backs off because of the fire released from the propeller. With this, the spaceship finally takes off and leaves planet Antares forever. In the final scene, a woman enters the control room and hands little Will his lost dog. Apparently, the dog was saved by the woman, who also hid it from Taxan. The movie ends as everyone inside the control room plays with the puppy, while the spaceship blasts off.